Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with part two of our Virtual Zoo Google Spreadsheet. So, my friends, let's get cracking. So, friends, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got the numbers for all five animals, and then you got to make sure they're accurate and they don't have any labels. If you put 12.7 centimeters, you need to back up and fix that because that will wreck things later. So make sure you've got that double checked. And then let me show you something right here. When I searched tree frog weight in kilograms, it did not give an answer. I had to type grams, which is 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram, so that I could get the answer of 90 grams. And I chose the large one. Then I had to go convert 90 grams to kilograms to find the 0 0.09. So sometimes you have to do some computations to actually find your numbers. So with your data complete, let's select all that data and let's start by aligning it to the middle just so it looks a little bit nicer. And then let's find some numbers here. The first number I want to find is called the average or the mean. When you click the cell underneath this, hopefully we all remember that if you add these together and divide by how many there are, you could calculate the mean. But check this out. There is a sweet tool called the function tool that lets us find the average or the mean. When you click this, it says equals average and then in parentheses, we need to tell it where we want to average. So I'm going to grab the top cell and I'm going to drag down to the bottom of the polar bears and press enter. So the average height of our animals is almost 223 centimeters. I'm going to take these and make them stand out a little bit by making them bold. And once again, I'm going to make them centered. And then this is a super cool trick. Since I want to do the average of both of these, I can take this autofill handle and when I drag it across, look at this. It does the average of column C. This one was the average of column B. This is the average of column C that easily. And then we can drag the autofill as well to get the average of the offspring. Now, most of our animals had between one and two. The tree frog had so many, that's what made it bump all the way up to 50. But that's how you can see how numbers skew just because of one outlier. Let's do another. Let's do another calculation down here. Type max. So we're going to find the maximum. Click underneath the height. Find your tool for formulas. Choose max. This time you need to be careful. Do not grab the average box. So notice I stopped at the polar bears and then I press enter. So the max was 550. We have got a small enough amount of data that's easy to see, but it's also a cool formula if you have a lot of data eventually. Grab your autofill and this time let's drag it two spots so they all calculate. Let's also use the cool format painter to copy the format from the word average and drag across all of those items so they all are instantly centered and bold. Real quickly, let's compute the min as well. Same trick, formula tool, min, only grab the data that we need and press enter. Autofill, zip it across, copy that format and paste it to all those spots. Let's quickly do some additional formatting. Let's select our data, which is just the numbers and let's add borders. I would like you to put borders on all the corners and I'd like you to also pick a cool color. I still like any of these in the middle rows and you can see that once I selected it and the pick the color, they all showed up. Continuing with our formatting, let's also highlight these rows. I'm going to stay with these yellows and I'm going to do alternating ones so it's just easier to see which data goes with which row. All right, friends, real quickly, let me teach you something neat here. We're going to select from animal all the way down to the number two. So we're selecting the data, not the titles, not the formulas. We're just selecting the data. 
if you hit data and you do sort by column A, which is kind of what we're thinking, look at that. It wrecks everything. But I'm going to teach you real quickly. There is an undo button. So let me show you the right way to sort by the animal name. First, we select from animal to the bottom number. Then we hit data. And we want to choose sort range. We're going to sort by column A. And we do have a header row. So we're going to turn that on. And we're going to sort by animal. We could sort by other items, but I want animal. Now watch this. Instead of penguins, when we hit sort, giraffe, which is the first letter, comes to the top, and all of our numbers stayed with the correct animals. Make sure you practice that one carefully. Use the undo if you break your stuff. And just remember, we use the sort by range, and we had to select the data for that to be available. I'm going to just show it to you again one more time. I am going to sort by range. This time just for giggles. First I'm going to do the data row. And I'm going to sort by height. And when I hit OK, boom, my smallest height is the tree frog. And my tallest height would be the giraffe. I'm going to do the data sort one more time to get it back the way I want it. I'm going to keep using the sort range. I'm going to turn on the header row. That way it does not move those. And I'm going to sort by the animal name and hit OK. Get yours sorted the same way and make sure you understand how to use that data sort. It is kind of funky. That undo saves your bacon if you mess up. Now that we've got that done, friends, we are going to add one more item inside here called the class. I want you to right click on the B in column B and choose insert one to the left. So now there is a cell right here that we have not used. I want you to type class because there are different classes of animals. If you go to Google and type animal classes, let's learn a little bit about them. I'm going to use the information at the KidZone site. At KidZone, they explain that there are five mostly used classes of vertebrates, which are mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Animals without backbones are called arthropods. They're usually spiders and insects. So the classes we're going to use most are mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, and arthropods. So let's find that data for our zoo. So I know throughout my schooling that the lion, giraffe, polar bear are all mammals. I know that the tree frog is an amphibian. And I need to double check the penguin. And I can do what type or what kind of animal is the penguin. And it is a bird. So I'm going to fill in the word bird, and now I have completed my data. Now this cannot have any calculations, so it's fine. I do want to add my borders, so I'm going to select those again. I'm going to go to my border tool, my border tool, and it already had the right color. So now it all looks the way it should. Alrighty, friends, so we're going to call this the end of part two of our virtual zoo. Friends, you've learned how to insert rows, format rows, add formulas, and collect some cool data about your virtual zoo critters. If you're in my classroom, now is the time that you need to take a screenshot and turn that in. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.